All right, so I just finished a video on the kill cards we used in the Marines and the casualty evacuation nine line that we would use to call up casualties. I guess I'm on like a morbid streak. Uh, so I'm just gonna roll straight into tourniquets. So first, tourniquets. Why, why would you use a tourniquet? You would use one if you have a uh, massive bleeding from a limb. Uh, so arms and legs, uh, massive bleeding or like amputation that hasn't started bleeding yet. Uh, it is a thing that if you lose a limb or part of a limb, um, basically your, your body will kind of go into shock and like shut down basically create its own tourniquet, at least temporarily in that spot. So that is a thing that can happen, uh, an amputation that isn't bleeding yet. So what does a tourniquet do? A tourniquet stops the blood flow to that limb entirely, if you apply it correctly. Uh, and the reason you want that is because if you do not, um, as quick as 60 to 90 seconds, someone can be dead, okay? 60 seconds to a minute, a wound like this can kill you. Uh, in the past, uh, tourniquets were seen as a last resort. They would uh, mean automatic loss of a limb or automatic nerve damage. And I believe that actually stems from battles like Gettysburg where you have thousands of casualties with life-threatening injuries on the field, and maybe it is days before the uh, mediocre, compared to our standards, uh, medical staff can treat them. And so in the, after battles like Gettysburg and in the Civil War, there are a lot of amputations. Uh, nowadays, we understand that if you can get a casualty to the hospital in an hour, the golden hour, they're probably going to be all right. Um, loss of limb. Uh, is not due to tourniquets, it is due to whatever the initial injury was. So where to apply a tourniquet? As I said before, they go on your limbs. Uh, when I was in the Boy Scouts between 2000 and 2010, we'll say, uh, they went over uh, medical stuff, they mentioned things like tourniquets, they told us they were last resorts even then, and uh, I believe they told us it was either to put the tourniquet a couple inches above the wound or a couple inches below the next joint. I don't remember which. It was a long time ago. A lot's happened since. I've slept at least once. Anyway, uh, that is no longer standard operating procedure for tourniquets. If you put one on, you put, at, put it as high as you can on that limb for a few reasons. One, because we're not worried about nerve damage, it doesn't hurt anything to go up there. Yeah, if somebody's got clothing on, you might not know the extent of their injuries. And if you put it just above what you can see, and there is an injury above that, uh, that's bad. So, I have a training tourniquet here. Training tourniquets are important. Uh, we did not have these in the Marines. We had just regular cap tourniquets that we used a bunch. Uh, I don't remember any of them failing, which was cool, but uh, we did use cat tourniquets in training a lot. Um, the reason you want a training tourniquet, blue generally designates a training tourniquet, uh, is because tourniquets are supposed to be a one-time use item. They're supposed to be disposable. Uh, cat tourniquets are on the expensive side, um, 40 bucks. Um, totally worth it to save your damn life, um, but you don't want to uh, wear those things out. You want a perfect, ready-to-go first-time use for a tourniquet if it's going on an actual injury. That's why we have training tourniquets. So, I'm just going to do a demo of putting this on myself. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate how to stage a tourniquet but basically you can figure it out for yourself that you want it set up so that you can open it with one hand to this large loop. And the reason you would want that, because if this arm is injured or say not there anymore, 
uh, you only got the one. So one-handed opening. You want the loop already made. Um, fishing the little strap through the thing to slide it is kind of a pain. So you want the large loop. Uh, the only time this would be an issue is if you do have like compound fracture, uh, like bad, 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 bad injuries where like stuff is kind of fanned out and this won't fit. Um, but that is kind of rare. So tourniquet, it's open one hand. I'm just going to put it on my left arm because it's freaking easy, right? Okay. I want the strap coming toward my body, the loose end toward my body so that I can get this thing as high up on my arm as I can and then pull it tight. Now you want the windlass that is this stick here to be on the outside, but not so far out that you can't reach it. So you get the tourniquet as high as you can and then you get the strap as tight as you can. Now that is important because if you don't, no amount of turning the windlass will make it tight enough. You want zero blood going through your limb at all once a tourniquet is applied. So before you even turn the windlass, you should already feel some restriction of your blood flow. And I do right now. That is what you want. <sighs> now the fun part. So turning this windlass. There is basically a, this is basically a strap inside a strap. So if you see, there's a little bit of fabric right here going through the windlass. When I turn the windlass, it will tighten that strap around my arm. So, it shouldn't take too many turns to get this thing. Oh, I hate myself already. It shouldn't take too many turns. Fuck me. God damn it. Fuck. See, and here's the issue with witless ah, tourniquets like this is getting it in the notch. Get in your home. There we go. Got it. Okay, so the windlass. I think I maybe got a full rotation in. Uh, sorry for the commentary. So it is as tight as I can get it. And the thing about putting on tourniquets, there is one way to put on a tourniquet, and that is correctly. There is one way. So, dun, 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 dun. anytime you practice putting one on, man, this is really fucking me. Anytime you practice putting one on, you put it on as tight as you can. So what I'm fucking with right now is I'm trying to get this Velcro flipped over so I can run it around the windlass and then back through the, uh, the hook there, and I run this strap over. All right, so, I mean, it was plenty tight just from getting the windlass, all that other stuff was kind of extra. So I can't like feel my hand right now. It's definitely not getting any blood flow. Though like the way you would test these is like trying to fit two fingers under there, but like if you can fit one, it's not tight enough. Like the, there's, there's no way I can get anything under this tourniquet. Uh, so. So, like I said, putting on a tourniquet, there is only one way to do it. And that is correctly. It's going to hurt going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be fine. 
if you have to do this for real, you're going to likely live. It is by far worth the pain to practice in order to be able to put on a tourniquet correctly when you need to. So, when doing practice with tourniquets, it is not ideal to take off a tourniquet that you put on yourself. Um, however, I'm the only one here. So, I'm going to take this off myself. Um, I think we can agree that it's okay to take this tourniquet off. The situation is over. I'm safe. You're safe. And I'm going to take this off now. Holy fuck. Two thousand years later. Whew. So, I put a tourniquet on. I have not lost my limb. Um, I can assure you I do not have nerve damage. Um, I've had tourniquets applied a lot. I'm all good. So, before you go and put your tourniquet back, when you go to restage it, you want to make sure and stretch it back out. So if you look how the windlass is, it's all twisted up. I'm gonna untwist it. And you see there's all this slack here. I'm just gonna pull the slack back out. We're good. So that is to make sure we are starting from the correct place the next time this tourniquet goes on someone. And as I've stated before, making sure these go on correctly is kind of important. They can save your life or the life of someone you care about. Tourniquets are important. You should have one on you, probably at all times. Um, I have one on me at all times, at least one, because they are important and bleeding to death is bad. Uh, that's all I got for this. Um, yeah, stand by for war, war stories with Uncle Sam. Uh, I do have a tourniquet story, so uh, stand by for that. See ya.